I'm doing pop culture, entertainment, and this story here kind of slipped through the cracks, but I wanted to pitch in on it. It's about Danny Masterson, who was sentenced to 30 years for an R-word charge. I'm going to say R-word just to avoid certain rules and regulations and stuff like that, but I think people know what I'm talking about. For transparency, I don't know full details about the case, but I will say after 20 years goes by, even if there is some evidence on paper or something like that, I would have a hard time knowing for sure, for sure, to put someone away that long. That's my silly little opinion, but let's see what Christina Ricci has to say. Here we go. By the way, if you don't know who Danny is, he's from that 70s show. It was on a long time ago, I think in the 90s or something. This is from The Hollywood Reporter, and it says, Christina Ricci stresses the importance of believing victims to discredit the abused is a crime. I know, we know, crediting victims is important. The whole problem is, how do we know if they're victims or not? Especially when someone's experienced a life-changing punishment. How do we know for sure? I gotta admit, it's a catch-22. There's really no answer. If something happened a really long time ago, like 20 years ago, there's no good compromise. I mean, I guess you could maybe punish that person a little bit, but usually that's not good enough. Like if they find him like $100,000 or a million dollars or something, would that make people happy? I don't know. 30 years in jail seems like overkill to me. So obviously people who are saying we need evidence aren't happy either. But let's see what Ricci has to say. I mean, you've got to at least address the fact that it might not have happened. You've got to at least throw it out there that you know there's a possibility it hasn't happened. Because there's a possibility it has happened. Absolutely. But the problem is knowing 100%. Christina Ricci speaking out in support of victims. In a statement posted to her Instagram story, the Yellow Jacket star shared that sometimes in order to support victims, people must admit that the people they care about can do bad things. Absolutely. I'm with you. But that's not the question. People can do bad things. I think a sixth grader could tell you that, or probably a first grader could tell you that. The question is, do we know for sure to punish them and take their life away from them that they did those bad things. So she wants to avoid the complex question and just put out this surface level theory. So sometimes people we have loved and admired do horrible things she wrote. They might not do these things to us and we only know who they were to us, but that doesn't mean they didn't do those horrible things and to discredit the abused is a crime. My theory is this, out of all the famous people out there, how many of them actually did bad things? And if you map on the odds of these things happening, does the number of famous people that committed those crimes and the pyramid of famous people who actually exist match? It is to be said that power can bring a certain confidence. I won't get caught. I can do this. I'm me. Maybe. But that's why you got to think it out critically and not just throw surface level theories. She continued, people we know as awesome guys can be predators and abusers. It's tough to accept, but we have to. If we say support victims, women, children, men, boys, then we must be able to take this stance. But we've been going in circles here for years. No one's saying don't support victims. People are saying, let's figure out the best thing to do when there's no way to know for sure. So how do you address that question? What's your answer? to moving forward if there's no solid evidence. In another slide, the actress noted that she has known awesome guys who are great to her, but have proved to be abusers to other people in private settings. I've also had personal experience with this. She concluded, believe victims, it's not easy to come forward. It's not easy to get a conviction. That's true. It's not easy to come forward. But I think the thing victims need to learn is life is hard. It's not easy. That doesn't mean you don't have to do it in a timely fashion. That's the whole thing. Everyone's like, it's so hard. It takes so long. You got to be brave. It could take years. Well, unfortunately, 
If it takes years, it's going to be real hard to believe and you won't have evidence. So the fact of life is you've got to come out, whether it hurts, whether it's hard to do, you got to just do it. Actions speak louder than words. Ricci's statement comes on the heels of Ashton Kusher and Myla Kunis apologizing in an Instagram video for writing character letters on behalf of their That 70s Show co-star Danny Madison in the All Word cases against him. In the video, the couple said they support victims, adding, We've done this historically through our work and will continue to do so in the future. They also explain that the letters were never intended to undermine the testimony of the victims or re-traumatize them in any way. I believe that. I mean, they knew Danny is a friend. They put their opinion out there. It seems pretty fair to me. They're acting separately and not necessarily using it against the victims. Their apology concluded, Our heart goes out to every single person who's ever been a victim of sexual assault, abuse, or the R word. And mine does too, and yours does too, and pretty much everybody with a sane mind, their heart goes out to these people. That's not what it's about. That's not in question for me. What's in question is determining if it happened or not. And what do you do if both sides seem to have points? Well, maybe one side has a credible story, but the other side has a very clean record and they say it's not credible, and they've also got a lot of people on their side saying this is not that type of person. What do you do when it's like even Steven like that, when you just can't come to a conclusion? I mean, I gotta say, in a lot of cases that might be, but there doesn't seem to be too many people offering a solution, people just taking sides. And I do recall, Ricci kind of got involved in the Depp vs. Heard case. She wasn't gung-ho defending Johnny, but she wasn't really criticizing Amber either. I remember one live stream, something positive slipped through about Amber. But that was a little while ago. I just seem to remember having mixed feelings about her views on these kind of things. Let me know what you think in the comments, doing shout outs, special thanks, things like that. And as far as this case here, it's a little touchy, a little heavier than I usually like to talk about. But I think this here, got away from the actual allegations a little bit, so figured it was cool. If you're not subscribed here, consider it. If you don't, I'll be sad, but I'll get over it. See you next time.